we have made it to moth number five. We're going to start with this nice gray color. The body we're filling with French knots. So I used a full strand for the head and then switched to three strands for stripes on the body. So with our French knots, we come up. I just did a single wrap because they're easier. Place your needle down near where you came up. Slide that wrap down to the surface of the fabric before punching through. Oops. I made a mistake. <laughs> I pierced through my uh my knot in the back that I was using to anchor. Well, I don't know what that was I just made. Let's try that again. Much better. <laughs> I knew when I put that needle down, I was like, there's, this is going to end poorly. <laughs> first. Let's see, we did another one. What was that? Number two. Number two was also with French knots, but they were super teeny tiny ones. They don't have to be perfect. We're just Making some texture here. I think while I'm right here, I'll go ahead and do my antenna. I just split stitch. I did a nice tiny split stitch. And then I'll just come in and add a couple more to finish off. In here. Excellent. So now we'll start with our stripes. So I believe I went straight to the green. Yeah. Right. So you can stick to the guidelines or if you want to just like do a certain number of rows, that might be cleaner because the guidelines might make you do like it might not um, line up with the thickness of your French knots. That's what I'm trying to say. These feel so tiny compared to the previous ones. a fan of French knots, don't do them. Do something else. You can do colonial knots, you can do beads, you can just do a satin stitch here. But you could still do the stripes if you want. That one 
is out of line. <laughs> Okay, so I'll jump in with the gray blue and do the next rose. So similarly to, let's see, which moth was that? Moth 2. It also has stripes on the body. And rather than leaving a gap and just working one color and then coming back and doing the stripes of the other color, I find this to be easier, even though you have to juggle the two colors kind of at the same time. But I found it challenging to leave a perfect gap that I would then fill in. to keep going? Probably not. Probably get the idea, right? Just gonna go back and forth all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these needles off to the side. Hopefully far enough so they won't be a problem. Famous last words. All right, let's go ahead and get into this thread painting here. I've lost my pens. All right, that's fine. Uh, so stitch direction is just kind of following along the length here. So these guidelines are my color change uh, suggestions. So I'm going to start with just some apparently giant stitches <laughs> to kind of orient myself kind of set the initial stitch direction. Something like this. And then I'm gonna come in and fill in those gaps. And then I'm gonna come in and fill in those gaps. Make sure you come right up to the body as best you can so we don't have a gap between the wings and the body. When you're done, if you feel like you need to add more French knots to kind of fix the shape of your moth head, you definitely can do that. Mine looks kind of skinny. So I don't know if I need to add anything there or not. We'll see. By the time I'm done, I probably will have forgotten and be worried about something else, so. But it's always okay to come back and fix stuff. Alright, I am continuing to just kind of fill in some gaps here. I haven't really done any splitting yet. That one maybe split something. Alright. So I'm gonna, I'll do back split stitch because it's easier. So I'm gonna come back and split that stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this edge while I'm up here. I think one of the most important things to remember about doing thread painting is that this line here is a suggestion. I want some of my stitches to go way over it, like this one, and some of my stitches will not make it that far. So we have, it's just the kind of a, a general guideline, like you can picture it as a jagged line if you like. So this is 
this. Me just going for it. <laughs> just laying down stitches, laying down stitches. Um, I'm clearly not paying too much attention to actually splitting the previous stitches. Uh, it's nice to do that if you can. It will help create a more smooth texture. It's also more time consuming. So there's a lot of ways to make thread painting perfect and seamless and majestic. I don't know what words. <laughs> um, and I think it's like up to us to decide, you know, what's important, like what, how long you, you balance those things, you know, you don't have to do all those things. I ran out of thread. So like uh, looking at okay how much how much bang for my buck I guess is how you can put it like if I go really slow and make sure to split every single stitch does it look that much different is it a significant difference for me to take the time to do that and maybe it is. Today, my answer is no, it is not, but some days it is. So I like to kind of come in and, because I am kind of randomly doing this, you can see when I push up from behind, like here's a hole, so I'm going to come in and fill that in. For some reason, the length I am taking from is really short. Got more holes here. I'll go back and take care of. Oh, one thing, um, tension. So with this stitch and with the satin stitch, Oh, all the stitches really like attention is important and don't want to pull too tight because that's going to lead to puckering of our fabric so that's kind of a practice thing all right more convenient I'd probably do more but I'm gonna move on to the next color so that we can move on so I'm gonna kind of do a similar thing where I kind of do my initial stitches to kind of lay Lay down where I'm going, what I'm doing. Oh, this is, we have kind of a ridge here, right? Of this color down here.
these colors are not super close in hue. So we are going to see a transition. We're not going to be able to perfectly blend it. And that's okay. Where this time yesterday when I was filming, the cats were all over me. They're all snoozing now. Playing through a chicken here. Alright, must go there. So this one's a little trickier because we want to make sure we pay attention to this line here. Let me make it. Where's my darn pen? Who knows? Okay, I was going to make it thicker for myself so I didn't forget. So this should be that light yellow color. which looks nearly identical to off-white, especially when you only have a single strand. So 
go as far as whether you want your stitches coming up through, like all going from left to right or all going from right to left. Again, that's one of those things that can help your thread painting look more smooth, more uh, silky. Um, but for me, I find it's not, it doesn't make enough of a difference for what I'm doing today that I'm going to worry about it. So you can see my stitch direction got kind of weird here. I would say that's more important to pay attention to. I can see I get kind of bored in one spot. <laughs> I have to bounce around a little bit. Oops, that was a weird stitch angle. tricky because I find when I do thread painting I find it easier to stitch back into my previous stitching but when I'm at an edge I find it easier to stitch down into the edge so uh, in this situation I can't I can't do both <laughs> I could if I started with the white or whatever this is light yellow And you know what? You can absolutely do it that way. If you want to start at the tips and then stitch toward the center. Nothing wrong with that. down here. Edge is looking a little rough. Okay, I um, 
everything's interesting because it's like we could keep going uh, forever uh, to make it perfect. But again, at some point we have to move on with our lives. And I think I'm ready to do that now. <laughs> uh, so to finish, I just added some colonial knots. Um, if you want to do French knots, you can do French knots. You can add as many. You can add zero. You can do whatever you want. So I just did mine kind of like down the edge. Uh, let's see, I did two. Looks like I did six on the top. You don't have to do six. All right, so colonial knots. You're going to make like a little a loopy. And you're going to stick your needle under the loop. And what am I doing here? No. Sorry, I did those French knots. Now I'm confused. Okay. We're making a loop this way. And then we loop over this way. There's not a good way to explain it. It's more of a look and do. But I'll do it multiple times. So it does get the same as a French knot where we want to kind of drag that wrap down. And then we're going to pop through. Make our little figure eight. So here it is on the sample hoop. Um, nothing much different on the bottom wings here. Just do the best you can. Um, I feel like I blended better here. I made some kind of wild decisions in this one, but I still like it. If you want to come back in and you decide like, wow, I don't really like that transition, you can come back and add, um, you know, use either color. I know there's holes in here too that I need to come back and fill in. So, but I won't bore you with it. It is tedious, but it can look really beautiful when you're done. So have fun. <laughs>